Okay. Welcome, Karen. Well, welcome back, Karen. My first Thank guest. You. And we've learned a lot. I remember like one, <laughs> there's one of these I was doing with someone, I forget who, you can actually see me throwing my phone because I forgot to shut it off. <laughs> cool. That is um, awesome. some interesting floral thing going on behind yeah. you. I've seen it's your place in Vermont. That's not it. This is not it. We no. are actually at my father-in-law's house in just outside of Brunswick, Maine. Um, oh. as you said, yeah, we, we actually live part-time in Vermont, part-time in New Hampshire, in uh, New Mexico. Mm. But um, we happened to be in Vermont and her dad let us know that uh, during the last big storm, four very large trees fell in his yard. Now he's 88 years old. No, in fact, he just turned 89 this week. And he's been out there trying to cut it up all by himself. So we drove the five hours here, got here just about oh, maybe a half hour ago. Um, what you see behind me is Barb's childhood bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I mean, it's like major foo-foo. Take a look. Major foo-foo. That's so pretty. That is but, so um, not bliss, man. Oh. That is not Barb. Oh. Um, this is her mother's idea. <laughs> her, her mom has passed, so. And uh, I remember when mom passed. Negative. Like the same week your mom passed. It was just horrible. Uh, yeah, about a week apart. It, it was horrible. So so this is her childhood bedroom. Um, my house does not look like this. <laughs> oh, but I could see her uh, dad being like that because that's her. Yeah, yeah. so her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you know a bliss, uh, no, this is not her, her taste. Well. <laughs> Welcome back to Have You Read Any Good Books? Thank and you. you have a new book. And that's Brand why we're getting, new book. We're getting together. I want yes. to remind people that the links yes. are in the description below uh, for Bella Distribution, for your website, and if you want to buy it on Amazon. Yes. Um, lots of stuff. It was released on April 13th, and we're recording this on the 16th, so just three days ago. Brand new. Brand new. If you look behind me, folks, to whatever below the Beatles, you see the uh, the book cover, mirror yes. image. Yes, I printed okay. that out and I brought it in to show Heather. It's like a movie poster. I love this. <laughs> who did, it's, who did, who uh, did it's the very artwork? Apropos. I'm sorry. Who did the artwork? I did. Awesome. Yeah, I do. I do all my formatting, all my covers. I do everything. I do. Uh, I do everything except editing. I do hire an editor for every single one of my books. Um, oh. But I do all of the manuscript servicing, and um, I get it released to Amazon by myself. I just want to point out that is a very good thing to bring up. Never yes. self edit. Ah, oh, never, never, oh. never. I mean, if you're running it online, uh, you know, if it's a little Vela story, mm -hmm. no, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You know, you're going to get feedback on it. It's a work in progress. That's Absolutely. fine. Other Absolutely. than that, there are a lot of great editors out there. I mean, I know she's in recovery from a heart attack. Nan Dunn was an amazing editor. Yes. Uh, Nat Burns, uh, Tara yes. Young. I could go on. There are a lot of great editors. And just because they're good with someone else, doesn't mean you're going to be the right fit this mm -hmm. on and on but i want to show folks the picture on here i'm going to put, pick one of these up one of these in closer look it's like her face comes out <laughs> it's like she's mm -hmm. uh now we have gotten together to this brand new book out and it takes place in hawaii which it I, does i've not been but there's a lot of uh, mystical and a lot of great ghost stories coming out of Hawaii. That and it's really, really pretty, I hear. Oh, it's beautiful. Barb and I have actually been there four times. Oh. Our favorite island is Kauai. And this book is set in Kauai. Um, the other part of the partnership is actually a Pacific Islander. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, kind of a multicultural relationship going on here as well. Nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Yes. Nice to uh, get my arm down. I don't want to block. Let's block the covers here. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I also want to mention that the the ebook is actually on sale um, through the rest of this week uh, oh. for two ninety nine. Um, obviously, it's on Kindle Unlimited as well, so it's free if you're on Unlimited. I did see that it was at two ninety nine. Um, that's a bargain. It is because your books run a good length. They generally are around 300 to 400 pages. This one is about 260. So it's a little bit smaller. Oh, still. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to look at my notes, beat the crap out of my microphone. Uh, Kayleen, Kaylina, you're going to help me with pronunciation here. Your Kalena. Character, Kalena is 54. She's the manager of the Princeville. <sighs> you can... Put in the big words from the girl from Massachusetts. Okay. <laughs> Kalia Resort in Kauai, Hawaii, mm -hmm. a native of Kauai. She had immersed herself in her job after a failed relationship. Yes. Left her, it left her brokenhearted and she was determined to remain single. And thank goodness that people go through that because then we'd have nothing to write about. This is true. <laughs> I know, right? This well, is true. If I had not gone through that crap, I would not be where I am. I wouldn't be with who I'm with. Yes. And I certainly wouldn't be able to put stuff down on paper that people would want to talk about. Oh, we met. We fell yes. in love. Oh, that's good on you. That's really uh -huh. boring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great people. Okay, so Piper. Yes. Checks into the resort. Princeville Resort. The attraction. Yes. They hit it off right away. You know something about that? Mm hmm I do. I was there. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> I was there. Our talented Val Brown was there. And that's uh -huh. your next book from what you've been telling me. So Yes, that, that one's titled Just One Look. But that, that one will be a little later in the year. But yeah, I mean, and it was. Yes, exactly. We would have lost money because it's like, are you sure they don't know each other? <laughs> are you talking about all of the books and the t-shirts and stuff that Barb came to the table to buy just so she could be at the Had table? Had so much blue feather <laughs> stuff and kept coming back. And she was up there yes. because Val was running late and I was a little concerned she was coming in and uh, then I went to meet her and we uh -huh. ended up having, well, Val got a burger as we all know that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Beef wouldn't have been my choice. <laughs> uh, but she kept up coming over to update me because we were sitting next to each other, you know. Yes. And now I know why. I thought it was my sparkling personality. Mm. Well, of course. What uh, else could it No, it could have been your ass or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well... Okay. <laughs> they have an instant attraction, which, as we've just proven, happens. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the viewers are like, what is wrong with them? But that happened. It uh, does. Uh, recovering from recent losses. I, so t I, I know almost nothing about this book except for it takes place in Hawaii. And okay. it has a really cool cover, which makes yeah. me think there might be a little, ooh, and I, you know, I like that. Yes, there's definitely metaphysical aspects to this and the Hawaiian gods are involved, you know, that kind of thing. So so briefly, without trying to give too much away. No spoilers. Um, no. Um, Piper um, was from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Oh, cool. And um, she had just buried her partner of 20 years. She, she died of cancer. Um, and it took her the, an entire year just to get the estate all settled and so she decided to go to Hawaii, um, basically to, to recover. And she went to the same resort that she and her now deceased partner went to every year. Yeah. So she went to this, so she went to this resort and, um, the resort was under new management and that's where Kalena comes in. Kalena was the manager of the resort. So they meet one of these eyes from across the room kind of things. Um, instantly attracted to each other and they pretty much spend the, the rest of that week doing things together um, and that then it comes time for Piper to go home oh. and, and of course she's devastated because you know she found somebody that 
feels like her her soulmate. She never thought she would ever find anyone again after, you know, being with her partner for 20 years. Um, so she goes back to New Mexico and while there, um, she decides that she's going to give this relationship a try and she sells everything and moves to Hawaii. Now she's retired. That's okay. Reti- That's still a bold move. Hugely bold move. She is retired and she has a, a big enough income that she doesn't, you know, she doesn't need to worry about expenses or anything like that. So she can afford it. So, I mean, even if it doesn't work out, who doesn't want to live in Hawaii, right? So um, she's in Hawaii. They get together. They are spending time together. And then tragedy strikes and something happens to Kalena. And while Kalena is, and I don't even want to say recovering because the chances of her recovering are next to nothing. Um metaphysical things start happening with the Hawaiian gods. So the mirror features prominently. Okay. That's why it's called mirror image. I'm like, what are you doing to this poor woman? Yeah. <laughs> the same thing I do to all my characters. <laughs> I'm torturing her, Mavis. What do you think yes. I'm doing? Yes. So I don't really want to go too much more yeah, we into don't it want to because go. it'll give it away. But I'm um, not very familiar with the Hawaiian gods. Now I'm guessing you did a lot of research on this. I did. Because you're big on research. Significant research. research. There's, uh, the, the gods that feature are the ones that, Pele, for one. Okay. Um, she is the volcano god. Um, uh, Lono, I believe, is the god of healing. I think she's the god of healing. It's it's in the book. Um, so there's, there's multiple, multiple gods that have to interact um, with Piper throughout the story. Um, and I'm not going to say they're interacting with Kalena for a reason because you have to buy the book, figure yeah, it out because of the tragedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so the second half of the book is, is pretty much, uh, the whole metaphysical part of the book and it has kind of a twisty ending, which I'm famous for twisty endings. You are. <laughs> So you um, can say that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just came out three days ago. Three days ago. It's, exciting. Um, it's a little early too. I thought it was for some reason I thought there was more time on that one. Or am I wrong? No, I had been actually working on this book and the next one at the same okay. time. Ah, uh, okay. And I kind of hit a roadblock with the other book because my other half. Um Refuses to cooperate with me. <laughs> the rude. next book, again, the next book is about pretty much about how Barb and I met. It, it's a contemporary romance and it's about how Barb and I met. I've already written half the book because right. it was my story. Now, for those of you who don't know, Barb does write. She doesn't yes. write often. Uh, she does have several short stories that are published in anthologies. Um, but she doesn't enjoy writing as much as I do. So to get her to sit down and write her part of the book has been like pulling teeth. You know, that's funny when I hear that. It's, it's like someone doesn't enjoy writing or reading. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, she's an avid reader. Avid reader. We have, I think I showed you a picture of my uh, my uh, oh, library. I've, I've, I've seen yeah. your library. Thousands uh, of books. That was just one bookshelf that was behind you. And again, in the links in the description is the first author chat I did with Karen, which was the first author chat. Yes. It was the first one we recorded. Well, technically, it was the first one we recorded. <laughs> it wasn't the first one we sat down to do. <laughs> uh, so there will be a link for that as well. But you yes. can see behind that was one bookshelf. You had like two more you said in the house. I have, we actually built, when Barb moved to Vermont so that we could be together, we built a two-story, 18 by 28-foot addition onto our house. The lower part of the addition is our living room, and the upper part of our addition is a library. So the library is 18 by 28 feet. And we have bookcases covering the 28-foot side 
one of the 28 foot sides and one of the eight foot sides, uh, 18 feet foot sides. And bookcases are so full. We are now building two more bookcases <laughs> in our dining room so that we have uh, uh, room to put the overflow. So, and, yeah. And you guys are, are really good at this process. The first time we set up mm -hmm. to do this, you're such a good friend. I said, I want, I'd like to do this. Uh, have you read any good books, LGBTQ books? Or yes. We like to call it ban this. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, you were on the road. You were we fixing were... Shane Curry's path. Yes. In we Ohio. were at Shane Curry's house doing some upgrade work on her and Brenda's home because they're selling the home and moving to New Mexico to hopefully live near where our other house is. And uh, and and Natty is there too, and uh, Natty is there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you were also very ill. <laughs> oh, I had some kind. It wasn't COVID. I do know it was, it was not crud. COVID. Yeah. You but it was it. We some had kind. It. Oh my goodness! It was weeks, and I ended up giving it to Brenda and Shane. Of course. Um, don't don't make me tell you how I gave it to them. <laughs> no, no. That's I a whole nother book. book. That's a whole nother book. You'll have to buy the book like everything. Well, I did no. I did interview Shane not long after that. It was some really, really, really bad viral infection. In fact, Brenda ended up having to go to the doctors and get antibiotics to get rid of it. But Shane and Brenda caught it from me. Uh -huh. uh, Barb Barbara also caught it, but not nearly as bad. Mine mine was like three weeks before it was finally gone. It was awful. Oh yeah, but, but you still took time out to do the interview, and which um, I'm I'm. This has been a learning curve. We just started to do that. We wanted to do it before uh, Halloween yes. and stuff because you had a new book coming out. Uh, say their names. Yes. Say their names. Good book, and yep. then um, we ended up uh, having to do it all over again because mm -hmm. I'm not one of these smarty smart like you. Which I learned that you have three degrees when I was doing yeah, research. It's <laughs> like, oh, okay. I just have the one, which you know led <laughs> to a career as a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well. There we go. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and that was oh nice you do. And here you are again. I was like, would you like to do it again? You have a new book, and I know where the on button is now. <laughs> Hey, it was a learning experience for all of us. It was, you know, and um, I've had a lot more guests now, and they're like, well, Karen did it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the exposure and right. the time that you take to, to do that for all of us. I really do appreciate that. Well, I just want to point out to everyone, these are good books. Have you read any good books? I mean, recommend, put them in the comments, you know, get out there, read before they're banned. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Uh, oh. lo I love this artwork here, though. It's like it's watching me. So that gave me the whole feeling on this. And But we have that nice romance going with it. And I'm, you do have a way of blending yes. the two yes. together. So is this um, going to so be another emotional roller coaster? Yeah. Rooting for them. But there's forces that are beyond this realm. Yes, exactly. You bet. Somebody asked me. Somebody <laughs> asked me um, um, what my genre was, and I'm thinking to myself, I write in like eight or nine different genres. But then I I sat down and take a look at the books. I have this is my twentieth book released. Twenty. Twenty. I have a ten book Billy Cat series, right? Which is primarily romance with a lot of angst, <laughs> because yes, I'm mean to them. Um, well, if, you know, like we said, if you don't, yeah. if there's nothing going on, then it's just Bill and Cat met and yes. it's almost. It's, it's everyday life. Yeah. Um, but the other 10 books, when I sat down and really looked at it, I have one romance, mm -hmm. which is On a Wing and a Prayer. Right. Yeah. I have one historical. Oh, no, it's not There it is. Yesterday, once more, that's speculative. Right I have one me. historical. Um, which is Say Their Names. Mm -hmm. And the other eight books all fall into speculative categories. And you know my oh, yeah. favorites in there. 
Rue Royale. Royale. Oh, that is my favorite, by the way, as well. But yes. uh, Rue Royale and the 50 and 1 are both uh, um, paranormal mm -hmm. and um, occult. Yes. The Blue Feather was occult. Yes. The Blue Feather, I originally started writing when I was still with Blue Feather Blue books. Feather. Um, uh, over the crescent moon deals with time travel. Right, so that one's right. definitely speculative. Um, a shadow in love is sci-fi. Right, and then yesterday, once more, and all my tomorrows are also time travel books. So, mm -hmm. so I can now say I'm. I guess I'm a speculative, um, women loving women author. Now, there's a great term I heard. Uh, recently, and because uh, I was interviewing Annette Mori yesterday. Yes, yes. And she calls it Romash because hers Ooh. are all so blended. And I asked, is that out there? Is it something the kids are saying? And she, she's in her age bracket. And she said, no, no, I, can, I think I came up with it myself. So Romash. Awesome. I think it romance. applies. You know, it, does. it does. It does. It does. I think you've joined the Romash crowd. I gotta shift you. <laughs> Speaking of our age, I gotta move. Ah, there we go. My little pride shirt here. <laughs> I find well, it odd that, uh, oh no, I find it awesome that I could walk into a store, a name brand store, and buy something that has pride on it. Yes. Na -na 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 -na. Yes. Yeah, because we make a we, difference. We makes a money. difference where you live. Makes a difference where you live. Yes, it does. Now, um, Vermont, Vermont huh? and New Mexico are both blue states. Yes, they are. So thank God for that. Yeah. Because I'm not sure I could live where people want me dead. <laughs> yeah, it's, this is not as bluish. <laughs> when I first moved here, it we it flipped. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, uh, where I'm from, you know, no way, yes. Massachusetts. Very blue. Very blue. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't even want to talk about that opening day game. <laughs> oh, that, you know, full on. We got up early to watch it. You know, the dedication yeah. to Wakefield uh -huh. and his late wife, both cancer. Oh, mm -hmm. touching to the 2004 socks, full on snot crying we were doing. And then the game. And they sucked so bad. They have not had a very good few years. No, I mean, not good at all. They came off the road. They were doing great. You know. Yeah. Ah. I always tell people, you can tell that I am a Red Sox fan because I handle disappointment well. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Cubs fans get us right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So yeah. So there you go. Um, for all you Yankees fans out there who enjoy that Lynn Ames. <laughs> It was she, um, is, she is a Giants fan though, so I have to give her credit for that. Yeah. Well, you know, some also Pats. Well, I yeah. actually like most of the 32 NFL teams, except uh -huh. for the Giants and the Jets, because you know. You know. Yeah. I, I like them all but Dallas. Can't stand Dallas. Oh, I don't nice. like Dallas like I don't like the Yankees. <laughs> oh I, well, did I ever tell you the ones that because Lynn Ames, if you guys are familiar with the author Lynn Ames, we, I love teasing her my wife who's a diehard i always say i'm a red sox fan by marriage mm -hmm. diehard red sox fan and so is robin alexander if you didn't know this uh -huh. so we were at a conference one and uh, i believe it was either heather or robin came up with the idea so we all had our red sox shirts on and gave lynn a big old hug <laughs> she claimed yeah. that skin was burning and we also have an agreement if we when we're having dinner with Lee Lynch that there's no baseball because she's also a Yankees. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I love that. Yeah. But it's a golden rule. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, her wife can win. Her wife is also a Red Sox fan. <laughs> Ooh, that must be an interesting household. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> Ah, but let's talk about books. Let's talk about books. Yes. You, you, and the new one, Just One Look, is on the horizon. I'm very excited about Mirror Image. It's three days on the market. It's it's on sale, guys. Two ninety nine for the ebook. 
I cannot stress that a month. Um, uh, uh, you know, it's morning here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the middle of the day where I am. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're in Maine, so I was big of that. Yes, I so. am. And I, I just happenstance have my Maine coffee mug going. Cool. Uh, now, say so I haven't. Like I said, I haven't been to Hawaii. So is there a mystical feel to the area? Oh, there is. Hawaii, and, and again, Kauai is our favorite island. We've been only to Maui, Oahu, and Kauai so far. Um, but by far, Hawaii has that Hawaiian feel to it. You would almost expect to see women in hula skirts um, oh. versus Oahu, which is like New York City in the middle of the Pacific. And and Maui is kind of a little bit of both. Um but Kauai is extremely laid back. Their um, their main shopping center is just like these little shops. You don't see like oh. humongous designer type stores. You don't see any of that. It's all little shops, little surf shops. And it's just uh, vendors on the street selling food. It's just really laid back. Um, there's a little town called Hanali, which... Kind of like Puff the Magic Dragon. Uh, is this exactly what popped into my head? Yeah. And uh, um, it's going to be there for the rest of the day, by the way. Yeah. It's just beyond Princeville, which is where this book is set. Mm -hmm. And actually part of it is set in Honolulu as well. Um, it is so quaint. It's right by the ocean. Um, there's It's seashore kind of atmosphere. But um, it is there's luau's going on all over the place oh wow and yes there are women in grass skirts at these luau's and there's that hawaiian music playing where every, every place you go it's uh very magical uh definitely Kauai is very magical okay i've got you oh there you are you were frozen up a little bit so but i could hear you so that's good okay so uh, <laughs> i would i would definitely recommend you go oh well it's pretty awesome We'll work on that. Um, but I think it's great. I, I have this picture, though, of, you know, rainy nights. and Because, like I said, I've heard a lot of the ghost stories coming out of there. And, you know, I'm a sucker for a good ghost story. Yeah, definitely. People hadn't figured that out from you know, spring. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the whole, um, the fact that it's a very uh, polytheistic um environment um they absolutely believe in all their gods mm -hmm. um and their their gods are all nice gods there's very few that are you know aggressive or evil if you want to call them that they have gods for everything um and they every every house has a shrine set up to it inside it well, to whatever favorite god you normally pray to right um and there's some of that in the book as well um it, it's it's more very like laid back and magical a guidance and our ancestors surround us yes okay. they believe extremely um they believe that family is right at the top um and that your ancestors guide you um in fact there is a um a spirit if you want to call her that that is one of the people that is plays there and I, it's a Hawaiian word, and of course, like you, I can't pronounce it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun when we go to do the yeah. audio version of things. Exactly. So the um the role of this particular spirit is to play middleman between people that are alive and the gods. Okay. So there's there's one of those in the story that Piper has to communicate with. Um, and they believe very strongly that that. People can talk to the gods through these inter intermediaries, um, and that you can you can gain blessing from the gods by being true to your family, by being a good person, um, and uh, by honor honoring your ancestors. Awesome. And those are three things that are that are required in order to be in in the gods' favors. So again that's part of the plot you'll uh you, you'll see that once you'll you see the rest 
Okay, we're going to run a little short on time, but can't stress this a month. Links below. On sale mm -hmm. now. Mirror Image, yeah. brand new one from multi award winning <laughs> author Karen D. Badger. Karen, thanks again for joining Thank us. Uh, have fun up in Maine. What's the weather like up in Maine? Right now it's about 60 degrees and sunny. Awesome. Very nice. I, I asked people that because I moved to Southern Nevada where we don't actually have weather. <laughs> okay, from fine booksellers everywhere, check it out, Mirror Image, and check out Karen's website in general. There's a lot of really great titles, as we've mentioned some of them today. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Bye.